Hello, and welcome to Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus. If this is your first time and you're a new subscriber, I appreciate the support. Also, please don't forget to hit the like button. And if you'd like to be notified of new tutorials that I've uploaded, just hit the bell and you'll be notified as soon as they're available to view. If you need the software that I use when I'm working on the tutorials so that you can follow along, just contact me on Facebook at Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus or Holmes & Howard Custom Events Party Supply. Drop me a message and I will send a link to download the software and use it for free. Also, a, a pictorial installation guide so that you won't have any issues. Then you can follow right along with me as I design. I have a lot of projects that I've already recorded. I have to edit them and then I will be getting those uploaded. But today I wanted to uh, work on some subscribers requests. Um, I previously did a tutorial on the utensil holder making it in uh, Microsoft Picture It. But I, it was requested that I do it completely in Design Space since I guess quite a few people are, are using Design Space for actually doing their designs as well as uh, cutting them out. I tend to make most of mine in Microsoft Picture It because it gives you more options on things that you can do. But um, I'm going to today do uh, the utensil holder completely in Design Space. So let's get started. First, I'm going to click on New Project. So first, I'm going to upload the, the graphics that I want to use. So I'm going to go to Upload. Then I'm going to click on Upload Image. I'm going to click Browse. And I'm going to go to the folder where I've saved the image that I want to use or the images. So I want to use these tulips and whenever I'm doing any of my projects in and design space I instead of when I'm uploading the image I don't use simple or moderate unless it's just one or two colors if it if I wanted full color like this one I always choose complex hit next or continue it already has the background cut out. I'm going to hit continue again. I'm going to choose the print then cut image, the one on this side, because I'm going to have th this printed out instead of just a cut like here. It already has uh, the name that I saved it to originally, and I'm going to hit save. Now I'm going to do that until I have all the images that I want to use in this project. On a picture like this, I can just use simple because it's only two colors or moderate. I'll choose simple, hit continue, and now I'm going to have my magic one connected. Click once in the background, and since it still has this extra writing, now I'm going to choose the eraser. You can change the size of the eraser right here, and it will change on your screen as you can see from the smallest all the way to the largest and since I have a lot of empty space I'm just going to go ahead and go with the largest and you just click at the beginning of the area you want to delete or erase and just drag it across I'm going to hit continue I'm going to choose I'm going to choose the print and cut image because we're going to put um, possibly a design on this or change the coloring so I'm going to choose print and cut it has a name this one's kind of long so I'm just going to change it to utensil holder and I'm going to hit save now I've uploaded all the images that I want to use or the graphics that I want to use in this project and I'm going to click on upload and then I'm going to click on each one of the elements that I want to use in this to, in this project. So I'm going to click Insert Images. 
and they'll start popping up in the screen. So I'm going to just move this over a bit. I can resize it for now until I'm ready for it. This is the template that I found online that I used for the previous tutorial in Microsoft Picture It. And this time I'm going to use tulips as my design. So first I'm going to start by cutting the area out of my tulips that I want to use on my glass uh, ball here so that it gives it the appearance that it's it's actually on top or that there's a glass covering over the image. I'm going to go to shapes, choose the circle. I'm going to resize the circle. It's locked and I want to keep it that way. I'm going to resize the circle and then I'm just going to move it over the area that I want to use in my design, in my utensil holder. So I think right there looks good, the area that I'll be um, cutting out. Now I'm just going to go outside of both of these, these images, making sure I'm not going to hit any of these, and I'm just going to drag across them so that it puts them in a picture by themselves. Now I'm going to click on Slice here on the bottom right, and it's going to slice out the section of the picture that I want. I'm going to click on the gray pieces and then click the red arrow to get rid of everything except for the section I want. Now I have my ball here and it has all this extra outside. I, I want to get rid of that so I'm just going to get another shape, make it a circle, and the reason why I don't leave it like that, because when I'm trying to resize it with the other pieces, it's going to show this as the size of the sphere. And when really I just want this little section, because this is going to be the width that I want the size based on. So I'm grab my shape. And I don't have to make it exactly the same size as the sphere behind it. All I have to do is make sure that that whole sphere is covered. Do the same thing. Slide in and across those two pieces. Hit slice. And it will just cut out the sphere by itself. So now it has a different width and height. I can send this to the background because I want the flowers, the tulips to be on top. So let's see, I'll sit it over here so that I can just send this all the way backwards. I'm going to choose send to back. And now my tulips are in the foreground and I'm just going to resize them in this uh, sphere, the glass sphere, so that it's about the same size. And you see the reflection is still showing in the background. So it'll give it that appearance that these are encased in this glass. Okay, that looks good. So now I'm just going to, I don't have to do it now, but I'm just going to do the same thing. Go across, join them both, and I'm going to attach them. So now whenever I move it, it will move together. Next, I need to cut a circle out of here to make my edge piece for my uh, sphere right here. So I'm going to go ahead is that oh that was that extra residual that was around the sphere <laughs> so okay so now I'm going to go to shape choose a circle again and I'm going to see which portion of this uh, silver rectangle I want to use I want some light and dark in it so that once again it will give it some depth I can even unlock this and shrink this down into one square so that I can get all of those different gradations of gray and, and uh, silver so that it will look even give it even more depth so now I'm going to do the same thing just slide from any side you can slide from the top it doesn't matter as long as you hit both the pictures that you're trying to slice through so now I have them uh, both joined I'm going to hit slice 
I'm going to click on this gray cutout, hit the red X to get rid of it, and I'm going to hit on the outer edge of the silver square, get rid of it, and now all I have left is my sphere here. Now, the, you don't have the option to put a shadow into uh, design space. Now, I want to give it the illusion that it has a darker edge all the way around it. So, I'm going to just duplicate this picture a couple of times. First, you left click to choose it. Then, you right click and choose duplicate. And I'm going to duplicate it twice. So now I have my two duplicates. Now I want to change this to a solid dark color so that I can make it the edge or the rim around this uh, silver circle. I'm going to go here to the top, click in this area right here. It's going to ask me whether I want original artwork and I don't for this one. I just want a color. And then I'm going to go to advanced and I'm going to choose the color that I want to make it. And I want this just to be a, a darker gray. So I'm going to resize it a little bit. And I'm going to bring my circle in. And I'm going to pull it out enough so that I can have just a little rim on there so that it gives it more definition. And I'm just going to position the original cutout in the middle of my circle and try to make sure I have the same, the same edge or the same edge width all the way around. And that looks pretty good. Now for this one, I want to do the same thing, but this one is going to go on top. Move it all the way to the front. So I'm clicking on send to the front. I'm going to move it in and I'm going to change I'm going to change its color the same way. I'm going to color advanced and this time I'm going to make it a little lighter still dark enough where I will be able to see that edge all around. So I'm going to go with that and I'm just going to once again position this one so that I have this outer width the exact uh, width that I want it to be. So I'm just going to position it about right there. And then I'm going to bring this over, just bring it all the way to the front. And I'm going to bring this over to see how thick I want that edge. So I'm just going to Position my tulips in the middle of this circle. And I want to bring in this outer edge a little bit more. So now I have the circles the size that I want them. And I'm going to just join all of these by putting dragging from the top all the way across those and then hitting attach here on the bottom right of the screen. And I can minimize that and move it out the way for now. So next I need to work on my cutout here. For now I'm going to leave it this way but I need to fill this in because this needs to be a seven inches tall. So I'm going to go here to shape, click shape, choose a square, and I'm going to unlock this square, and I'm going to make it 7 inches tall. Right now, the height is 3 inches tall. I'm going to just highlight it, type a 7, and hit enter. So now this is the size that I need my entire utensil holder to be. So now I'm just going to, this is locked, make sure it's locked, and I'm going to resize it from the side, and I'm going to make sh 
make sure that I'm, I'll zoom in a little bit by clicking on the plus bring it down some position this black or gray rectangle right on the back of the utensil holder template and I'm going to just drag this out until I meet up with the lines on both sides and I'll slide this around move it over until I get it exactly to the width of this column so now I'm looking pretty good I think I need to move over just a little bit and that looks perfect so now I'm going to just bring this down all the way to that fold line now if I wanted to change this to a particular color I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can grab my my tulip and zoom back in I group those just so I can move them over a bit and now for my tulip I'm going to bring it all the way to the front right click and hit send to front and I'm going to resize it for this area this is going to be the front of your utensil holder so I just I'm resizing it just by sight to where I would want it on my utensil holder I'll make it I think I like it a little bigger yeah so that will work now once again I can move it off to the side now let's say I wanted to make this holder yellow what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a print then cut so I'm going to click here on the line I'm going to choose the yellow and that yellow looks like it works perfectly now if you want to you to make your score lines so that it will automatically score which they don't seem to score too deeply um, when I do the scoring on the Cricut but it will at least give you the line that you need so that you can uh, fold fold your uh, utensil holder appropriately so I'm going to go once again to shape this time I'm going to choose score line click it once it appears here I'm going to click on that score line and I'm just going to drag it right over to the edge of that yellow which is where our line is going to be I'm going to pull it down so that it's covering that whole section that I'll need to fold now that I have it here I'm going to right click on it and copy it and then I'm going to right click and choose paste and I'm going to put this one on the other side right next to that yellow so that it will fold right at the edge of the yellow portion now I need one more for this section so I'm going to right click and paste this time you can either click here to rotate it 90 degrees which I recommend you do so that you don't have a crooked um, so that you don't have a crooked score line you go right here where it says rotate it was on zero and all you do is type 90 hit enter and it becomes a horizontal line and I'm just going to drag it down to this bottom fold line getting it right in that gray and then I'm going to just pull it over so that it's in this area right where I want the fold hit done now I can change this to yellow now that I know where my fold lines are I'm going to click this portion of the holder I'm going to go here to the fill I'm going to click where it says original artwork choose color choose once again that yellow and now you see your setup for your utensil holder now I'm going to drag up from the side come down over those score lines and the yellow outline 
and I'm going to choose attach. Now this will make this one piece when you go to the next step to make it. So I'm just going to move this back over, bring it to the top, just so I can get an idea of how it's going to look once it's printed. I'll just bring it over a bit, right click, choose send to front, and now you see how your utensil holder is going to look. Now if you didn't want to put these on separate to give it more of a depth or dimension, you can just simply move it here and you can print it just like this where you have the medallion already on your utensil holder. If you wanted to add some initials or someone's name, you could easily do that. Happy birthday, whoever, just by moving it down personalize it by hitting text it'll give you a text box you can type whatever message you want you can change the font if you want it to once you click on it and it, the font and style appears you can change this to any of these fonts I have not purchased any of the fonts and uh, from uh, Cricut I go to my system and I just choose software that I already have or font that I already have in my system if it's spread apart you can go here and make it exactly as you want you can space the letters or you can space the line if you had like happy birthday Kathy and you wanted to move that line closer I just want the letters move closer together so I'm going to go to letter space I'm going to click the down arrow to bring them closer together. That looks good. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Wrong scroll, that one. And then I'm just going to grab my lettering, resize it by eyesight and just place it wherever I want. If I wanted to add a name, I can shrink this down a little bit, move it down more. Double click on this, hit enter, and type Kathy with an exclamation. You can align it to the center by clicking here on alignment, choose center, and that will center your text. So now we're ready to print this out. I'm going to go over here to my right hand side on make it and I'm kind of fumbling around on the design space screen because most of the time I use my iPad when I'm doing this because I have my uh, Cricut and work area set up in a separate place from where I have my desktop computer and make it is on the bottom on the iPad but here it is on the top and if you're using it on a, a desktop computer so I choose make it if I wanted a lot of copies if I wanted to print these as separate um, if you could print this like on a regular cardstock and then you could print this on photo paper so if you wanted to do it that way you could do it that way I'm gonna also show you if you want to print this all as one piece you, all you need to do is the drag over, hit attach, and hit make it, and now it will make it all as a solid piece. So you would just click continue here. You would click send to the printer. It would send it to the printer of your choice. After you send it to printer, you would get a box that would here where it says connect to your machine and since this is far away from my machine um, you're saying this instead but it would be a drop down menu you would click it and choose the the actual Cricut cutter machine that you have once it's printed you would click continue it would tell you to load your mat 
into your Cricut, whichever you have, and then you would be ready to cut it out and assemble. Thank you for watching this tutorial. You're watching Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus. I'll see you next time.